2020 has been a hard year for millions of people, but on December the 1st, it dealt a crushing blow to science, to Puerto Rico and to the world. At 7.55am, the Arecibo radio telescope collapsed, bringing nearly 60 years of groundbreaking space science to an end. For many, the Arecibo Observatory had been an icon. It was the place to go and learn about space. It was, you know, a sense of pride for, you know, for us because nobody else in the world had it. It was a magical place. It, it seemed like impossible <laughs> that it even existed. It was so big and it was just hidden away in the jungle, right, of Puerto Rico. It was just so unexpected. Oh my goodness, it was wonderful. That's one thing I think people don't talk about enough is just how beautiful and evocative in many ways the site is, more than just the dish, the whole place. Once you were there, once you were there at the observing deck up at the, in front of the visitor center, that immensity of that huge thing really hits you. It's mm. like, it's nothing like uh, in the picture. The bizarre and magnificent telescope was catapulted into the public eye in 1995 when it featured in the James Bond blockbuster, GoldenEye. You can really see how massive that structure is when you've got like James Bond hanging off it. Arecibo became a go-to location for films and documentaries over the years. For me, growing up, I think I first came to knowledge of Arecibo because of the film Contact that starred Jodie Foster. Dynamite place to do some things. What are you sure, talking about? I can't. Sorry. But the observatory was much more than a sci-fi movie set. The Arecibo telescope was a monument to science, an incredible icon of engineering, human ingenuity, and, I think, design nestled deep in the Puerto Rican jungle. The concept for the telescope was actually born out of the desire to track nuclear ballistic missiles through the atmosphere during the Cold War. The problem was, at the time, scientists didn't have a very good idea of how the top layers of the atmosphere worked, so they designed a huge radar dish to find out more. The incredible structure took three years to build, and when you understand its complexity, you can see why. The dish itself is a giant segment of a sphere, as wide as three football pitches, end to end. It's hard to imagine just how big this thing is. A giant bowl, 305 metres in diameter. The next challenge was to find a place to build this immense dish. The island of Puerto Rico in the Caribbean offered a surprising geological solution. Beneath the lush tropical jungle, it has a limestone cast terrain, which gives rise to towering hills and plunging sinkholes. That means that engineers could search for a hole that was as close to spherical as possible, making it possible to install the dish with the minimum of earthworks. Construction began in 1960, with cables strung low across a sinkhole in the northwest of the island. Those cables supported nearly 39,000 aluminium panels, each the size of a dinner table. And those panels were pierced with holes to let the wind and rain pass harmlessly through. It doesn't matter to the radio waves that Arecibo observes that they're full of holes, because the waves are so big they effectively don't see them. It soon became apparent that the Arecibo telescope would be able to study radio waves from space as well as from the atmosphere. But to study different parts of the sky, the telescope needed to be able to point in different directions. Because the dish is built into this depression, and perhaps more importantly because it's absolutely enormous, the dish itself can't move to look at different parts of the sky, so the engineers came up with an innovative solution. Instead of moving the dish, they'd move the receiver. The receiver was mounted on a 900 ton platform suspended 150 meters above the dish and supported by cables running from three immense towers around the outside. It was such a treasure for American science and, you know, and science around the world. There's no other place like it. You don't see a hanging observatory like that. You don't see three towers with cables we have a platform in the middle and a big dish. It was, it, was, it was an icon of the sort of dreams that people allowed themselves to have in the 60s, you know? Something completely impractical and stupid to build, and we did it anyway. The Arecibo telescope was the largest radio telescope in the world for half a century. It was a beacon for innovative space science, revealing the universe anew in radio frequencies. All these different ways for us to increase our perception, you know, besides our senses of sight and hearing and smell, we can also use these kinds of instruments like Arecibo to peer into the universe around us. The sky is not dark at night if you had radio eyes. The sky is bright at night. It's lit up by the emission 
of cosmic ray electrons. Arecibo allowed astronomers to study the universe in brand new ways and attracted scientists from around the world. I always call myself jack of all trades and most certainly master of none. So, uh, you are too, you are too when we went to Arecibo, Chris was the head of astronomy group there. The astronomy community at Arecibo worked together at the very frontiers of science. A typical night of observing would bring together top class researchers to try and discover the unknown and sometimes the unexpected. One such venture began with nine astronomers one night in the early 2000s. Typical, the men said, we're going to drive. So we went and sat in front of the control desk and uh, pointed the telescope, followed the galaxy and the girls. Two, only two. You and Barbara oh, no, three. and Myra. Myra, three. Uh, they went and sat at the computers and looked at the data, the much more exciting part really, as it came off. They pointed the telescope at a galaxy 250 million light years away and scanned the radio frequencies for the signatures of interesting molecules. So the men all sat there and said, right, we're pointing at it. Do you see anything? And from behind us, we heard, well, uh, well, uh, there probably is uh, a molecule there. It's something called methanamine. Well, I didn't know offhand, of course, but we looked it up and it is actually a prebiotic molecule. This simple molecule of carbon, hydrogen and nitrogen is thought to be a precursor to glycine, one of the fundamental building blocks of proteins in living things. Finding glycine in an astronomical object has been the holy grail of uh, astronomy for some time. The discovery of its precursor is a sign that the ingredients for life are being cooked up in the cosmos itself. And all, exactly. all we men did was drive the bus. No, come on. One of the unique features of the Arecibo Observatory was its ability to not only see the universe in radio frequencies, but to transmit those radio frequencies back into space. The concept was evocative to scientists in the emerging field of astrobiology. Uh, we even sent one of the messages from us out into space called the Arecibo message to show that we had the ability to send messages out there. In 1974, the Arecibo telescope transmitted a complex radio message in the direction of a globular star cluster 22,000 light years away. If intercepted by extraterrestrial intelligences, it could be decoded into a pictorial representation of life on Earth, including our biochemistry, our average body shape, and even our location in the solar system. But sending radio waves into space had applications closer to home, too. Coming from an astronomy background, I was just awed that you could manipulate the signal that you were sending out into space like, like an experiment, um, as opposed to just passively waiting for the universe to sort of send you its, its, uh, its information. By bouncing radio waves off bodies in space, scientists could generate radar images of asteroids, planets and moons. All thanks to Arecibo's unique radio voice. And there really is no facility like Arecibo on Earth. Um, the sensitivity it had, um, you know, the transmission power, you could see out to Saturn. That's how powerful this radar was. Data from Arecibo produced high resolution maps of our moon, Mars and Venus. It even helped to find ice on Mercury, the scorching planet closest to the Sun. So people sometimes say that the messenger spacecraft uh, found water on Mercury, but really it was it was Arecibo that, that gave us that information 30 years ago, and messenger just confirmed it, essentially. Even closer to home, Arecibo's radar mapping helps scientists keep track of asteroids, which might pose a threat to life on Earth. We can uh, shine the light on asteroids and see how are they behaving, how close they are to the Earth, how fast are they in relation to the Earth. Arecibo was the first line of defense against asteroids. It was unique in its capability to, to track and monitor these asteroids. The Arecibo Observatory contributed to untold advances in space science, but it was also a place that fostered strong bonds between the people who worked there. And most of those people were scientists, were engineers, were, you know, people who worked on the platform crew. No one talks about them enough. I'm one of the observatory kids. I may not have been born at the telescope, but I certainly grew up there. 
all the people who were there while I was growing up, the staff astronomers, they were like my uncles and aunts. Like They're more my family than my biological family are in many ways. The facility attracted a diverse community who lived and worked together incredibly closely. We had the same interests. We liked space, we, we liked science. The Arecibo community celebrated its successes together, but also mourned its losses together too. Uh, we did lose two other students that summer um, on June 21st, 2003. We lived at the site over, over the summer. As well as their research activities, the students would take trips in their time off. I was with a group that went to go see sort of an archaeological site nearby. Uh, but there were three other students who decided to go for a hike behind um, the telescope. Only one student returned at the end of the day. Her companions, Christopher Riley and Colin Ewers, had disappeared. They'd been in the river. She looked away for a moment, and when she turned back, they were gone. It later transpired that they'd been swept away through the waterfalls and caves of the surrounding karst landscape. So they both drowned, uh, which was awful. The tragic deaths of these two young men had a profound effect on the students that year. So we kind of all just banded together and tried to support each other, understanding that it could have been us so easily. I realized that life was short, and so you should take advantage of every moment you have, because that's a real gift that you're given. Every year, Arecibo offered opportunities to students still in high school. I started in this program called the Arecibo Observatory Space Academy, where we got to do science research. That was about two and a half years of experience at the Arecibo Observatory, of going there almost every Saturday, spending there more than eight to 12 hours every Saturday. Students could conduct their own research there, as well as take part in ongoing studies with qualified astronomers. And that for me was the best thing ever because I, even though I didn't even touch a button, I got to see how the, how the, the astronomers used the Arecibo Observatory. I got to be in the room where it happened. And without the Arecibo Observatory Space Academy, I wouldn't be who I am right now. The experiences that I got there, the, the knowledge that I got there allowed me to become a better leader, a better person, and a better student. As well as being transformative for young academics, the Arecibo Observatory was a jewel in the crown for Puerto Rico. The Arecibo Observatory was the only place in Puerto Rico where active space science was conducted. It is such an important icon for Puerto Rico. It brings in money for their economy. So many visitors would come. Um, it, was, it inspired so many students um, to study space science. About 100,000 people uh, went to the observatory each year. And I know hundreds of students that were inspired to pursue careers in science, engineering, technology, and mathematics, STEM. I do believe that it is as a result of having the telescope there that you actually see a lot of Puerto Ricans involved in aerospace research. In 2006, 40% of graduates from the University of Puerto Rico majored in engineering. It's a point of pride for us. It's an icon. It's a historic monument, it's, it feels like it's ours. But the last few years have not been kind to the iconic Arecibo Observatory. In 2017, we survived Hurricane Maria, which was an experience, a uh, category four or five hurricane that went through and destroyed a lot of the, destroyed island. A lot of the island. The uh, telescope almost. survived that one, although it did get damaged. There were times when it got better, there were times when it got worse. You never quite know when something's gonna be the tipping point. On the 10th of August, 2020, an auxiliary cable broke and dropped down through the dish, slashing a hole 30 meters long. And the thing is, none of us ever expected that this will collapse because, you know, the whole structure has been there since 1957. And any time they did an inspection, the report or the impression was those cables are going to last for 100 years. Less than a month later, a main cable for one of the supporting towers to the platform snapped. And that's when I said, oh man, this thing is my, it's gonna fall. The decision was made shortly after to decommission the telescope and try and dismantle it before it fell. I went with some friends and we went to the observatory and we saw it from a distance for the final time. 
And I remember just looking at it and, and saying, well, this might be the final time that I see you up. It's the final time that I see you there. It, you know, it looked as if no, nothing happened. I couldn't see the dish from where I was, but to me, it just looked normal. But I knew that with every second that passed, the Arecibo Observatory was near its end. And sure enough, at 7.55 a.m. on the 1st of December, the remaining cables finally gave out. A friend of mine, uh, she lives uh, next to the observatory, she, she sent me a message and she said, Wilbur, I heard, I heard a noise, a big noise. And then she says, Wilbur, it's, it's down. The 900-tonne platform fell tearing the tops off the supporting towers, crashing into the dish and shattering on impact. So I just got into my car and I drove to Arecibo. And uh, when I got to the place where I could get the closer to, I, you know, I just sat in silence and just look at it. Because that, that's all I could do. News of the collapse rocked the entire Arecibo community. I mean, it was a real gut punch. Arecibo is and was a huge part of my life. And I just, yeah, I, to have it gone is just, heartbreaking doesn't give it justice, I think. Um, it was like grieving, you know, the loss of my friends all over again. Um, I still get emotional just thinking about it, really. Tabazi and I have not been able to look at the video of the actual collapse. We just can't see it. We... Uh, maybe one day, but not no, yet. No, no. Not yet. We all knew this was coming, but you can't help but be surprised when something that you love so much, something that, yeah, it's like a family member, like, like the grand matriarch or patriarch of the family, I suppose, finally goes. I've, I've been crying a lot and haven't had the time to think about why exactly I'm crying, what exactly I'm crying for. Is it for me? Is it for the people I know who work there? Is it for the telescope itself? Is it for Puerto Rico? I don't know. And it's, it's gonna be something I'll think about for a very long time. The iconic radio telescope is damaged beyond repair. Its 57 year reign over the Puerto Rican jungle is over. But even as they grieve, Arecibo's family is making plans for its rebirth. We deeply care about the Arecibo Observatory and we want that to remain as the premier center for, for education in, in space here in Puerto Rico and in the world. Some science could only be done at Arecibo. It's the only large radar system that can image near-Earth asteroids in that level of precise detail. If we don't want to end up like the dinosaurs, we need to be able to study the things that could do that to us. Now it's gone. Now we are a lot less safe. Aside from all the scientific uh, advancements that, that it can bring, it is also a source for tourism, for economic development. And it's also one of the reasons why a lot of people live where they live. We cannot lose the observatory forever. Right now, there's a petition lodged with the US government and a worldwide effort to save the Arecibo Observatory from being resigned to the history books to rebuild it with new technology and new aims in mind, and to keep Puerto Rico on the cosmic map. Whether it will be exactly the same as the old telescope, whether it will be an improved version of the old telescope, whether it will be something totally different, or whether, tragically, it will be a memory, only time will tell.